Hello, everybody, and welcome to World Smithing, where we take a concept and world build it. I'm Cody. And I'm Joe. Uh, I feel like I brought similar energies to all of the intros this recording. Yeah. Uh, hey, guys. Ha, ha, hey, hope everyone's doing well out there. How have you yeah. been, Cody? I have been all right. I've been working on uh, some some downer material for the World Smithing episode. Because if there's one thing we need right now in the world, is a huge downer, good bummer downer stuff. Yeah, yeah I feel yeah, like yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like 2020 has been just uh, it's been a little too nice. Yeah, it's been a little like, too light. So a little so bit, many little good too. things have happened that I really need to take it down one peg by creating content for the internet. So yeah, uh, much like our previous episodes and uh, the new direction of world smithing. Um, this week, Cody has prepared for us a little uh, synopsis of an, an idea, a concept that we can world build out. And uh, as, as we listen, I will come up with some questions to help flesh out aspects of the world and, and uh, clarify things here and there. And kind of the thing that <coughs> happens in, uh, in when you play Dungeons and Dragons, when your character or when your player characters ask you questions that maybe you didn't necessarily think of and, and uh, have to think of things on the fly. Uh, so Cody, do you want to give us the prompt that you came, uh, or the prompt that you were working off this week and then get a rolling? Yeah. So we decided to tackle, or I decided to tackle a zombie apocalypse in a fantasy setting. Very nice. And I'll just get right into it. Today marks the 17th cycle since it began. Most still remember when the first victims came to Crownspire and the initial panic. The plague itself was pretty treatable. Clerics and wizards of all walks of life could cure the disease, but they couldn't see it. The populace had no idea what was about to transpire. After a few months, the cases of this fairly harmless disease skyrocketed. Almost everyone in the city was infected. Eventually, like most cities, they deemed it nothing to worry about. It was after the first round of deaths it was taken seriously. Soon, some sort of plant-like entity took over the bodies and the corpses came back from the dead in a feral state. Nothing short of a full burning would stop these monstrosities. The clerics and wizards tried their best, but most of it was too little, too late. Everyone reacted differently to the disease, but everyone in Crown Spire knows of the purge. General Octavian Brighthammer led the church and Crown Spire's army throughout the town and burned everything that wasn't clean of infection. All that remains was the upper district where Castle Crownspire stood. Anyone who could be saved was rushed to the upper district, but most perished to the week-long flames. Today marks the 17th cycle. Grand Lord Octavian Brighthammer sends another group of druids to the pyres. It took many years, but started, but we started over. We built new homes and farms over the ashes of our fallen families. Our Grand Lord calls it a celebration, to honor the gods by burning the heathens who were responsible for the destruction of Crownspire. We finally became a self-sustaining nation, not that we had a choice. We haven't heard from any of the other cities since the Purge. No one is allowed to leave the walls of Crownspire. Nothing but death that's out to kill. Small group of rangers occasionally leave the city. They revel in their conquest, but all I see in this watchtower is ruin. Today marks the seventeenth cycle since the world was destroyed, and that's all I got, baby. Okay. Um. So, uh, I guess the the big question on my mind is: uh, Is this one of those deals where no one's quite sure, like, what is responsible for this this plant like uh, entity? You know, because like. I feel a big thing in a lot of uh, zombie apocalypses is, is that there are a lot of theories and there are a lot of ideas about what might have caused it, but that's ultimately not the right question to ask. But is there like a clear idea of what is responsible for causing this, um, this, this, uh, this instance or this, this, uh, this, this thing impacting the people of crown spire sure um i think most people kind of understand if they're familiar with magic in any way um 
that maybe there's something about nature that has manifested in a very magical way as as magical things do sometimes Mm -hmm. um but is it expressly answered no i don't think there's a druid or like some prophet that came in and been like the druids did it oh fuck that nature so like some people have their suspicions and grand lord octavian brighthammer is willing to put druids to burning pyres for it but that may not all that might not be the answer okay so like no one at at no point is anyone kind of like oh it's 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 the gods who have abandoned this world for our sinful like yeah, lustful none of that. ways i think uh okay yeah i think the gods are still around and like but no one's able to answer the question uh so you mentioned that like early on the clerics and wizards were able to maybe call it did something happen to them that uh they were unable to assist anymore like have have the people turned their backs on these kinds of magic users and their ability to impact the the world and the um the healing or was it one of those deals where everything looked okay but then the clerics and wizards realized that they were like kind of outclassed by this by this thing so in this case it's it was it was a um one of my goals for this was to make it so that the the Dungeons and Dragons answer wasn't just, well, clerics, paladins, and wizards would have been able to fix it with their spells. Um, okay. So in, in my initial prompt, they were able to cure the disease. Like, the disease was curable, but they couldn't perceive it before it infected somebody. And so they never Got quite, it. so the idea is that they never quite figured out how it spread. And so after a few months, the cases were just so high that the clerics and wizards were just like, well, we're fucked. We don't have enough spell slots to cure this many people. Okay. And since it hadn't at, up until that point done anything other than just like, there's a disease on you. They deemed it nothing to worry about. However, that was a fatal mistake that cost, you know, that started basically the apocalypse is like, it was, it's kind of like, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a disease, right? Like it, it manifests in weird ways. It does things that are, you know, this thing probably mutated at some point And once everybody was in fact, you know, it's like a game of, um, uh, what's that game called? Uh, pandemic pandemic or um god what is it it's a like, real fun thing to talk about in, in uh yeah in, in the in the, 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 the year of 2020 um but yeah it's like it's like that it mutated or something happened where all of a sudden people who were dying of the disease were turning into you know plant like zombies so if it's my understanding, uh, people have turned on druids. Have they also turned on clerics and wizards as well? Like, are they trying very hard to have a magicless society? Like, you know, Oh, magic has betrayed us and abandoned us. I, I get the druids thing because it is, seems to be largely a plant based, um, zombie apocalypse, but have the people turned their backs on other magic users as well? You know, I hadn't really thought that far about it, but I I have to imagine that people are probably very weary of magic because magic is kind of the reason this all happened. Mm-hmm. Like the clerics and wizards did nothing about it. The you know supposedly according to you know the information they're getting from their their leader, the druids are responsible for it. So like how you know i i bet you there would be some turmoil and that might be some very interesting conflict within your game is like you know people are starting to like kind of side eye wizards and stuff because it's like well you know they might be responsible too and plus for a lot of people 
a bunch of people died in the fire. Imagine what they probably had to use to create fire at that scale. Mm, so I'm sure, sure there's tons of people who are like, if they're not magic users, they hate wizards or they hate clerics or paladins or whatever. So, yeah, I bet you there is a lot of turmoil and that could be very interesting and dynamic things that you could incorporate in your game where like, oh, one of your party members is a magic user. Well, you know, um, you eventually like, you know, eventually if they if they're found to be using magic, like, you know, they may get, you know, a group of civilians might try to like, you know, attack them when they're you know vulnerable or whatever okay so i might have uh might have misunderstood this is the lower part of the city still in flames no it was um basically uh general who is now the grand lord octavian brighthammer basically burned the lower district for a week to burn out this infestation okay and now this is the 17th cycle, so the I, that was my fancy way of saying the 17th year after. So mm-hmm. they have, like, it's still fresh in a lot of people's memories, but, like, yeah, it's been 17 years. So the, the lower district is no longer, like, you know, on but, fire. But once a year, they, they all get together and they round up some druids and... Yeah, They'd and burn, burn them, them at the stake, you know, very, very, uh, very clean, kosher purging, if you will, for Crown Spire in this apocalypse. So are are, are there like a, a level of secret police who, you know, try oh, to yeah. monitor druids and druidic works? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That could, you know, I think, honestly, that would probably be one of the potential starting points of a campaign is like you are you are the police that work directly under the grand lord and your job is to make sure that you know nobody's trying to recreate this disease within the within the city it also could be you happen to get caught up in a situation where the secret police show up and they think you are part of this druid cult and they could be the, you know, the kind of baseline like antagonist where they're like, all right, well, you need to prove yourselves by like proving that like the, you're not part of that cult and help us or things like that. Like, yeah, there's definitely, if you, in my opinion, if you're going to have like the, the way I have this set up, cause it's very like kind of dark and gritty, which, you know, I like in a zombie apocalypse. Cause that to me, that makes sense in my brain. Um, you gotta have secret police. I mean, you just gotta, you gotta, um, okay. Has there been any, has there been any attempt to see if there's a way to like rehabilitate, um, rehabilitate um these these creatures or are they like pretty far gone at this point you know um i'm sure there probably were people who tried um during that first cycle when like everything kind of happened but i'm sure it's it's now it's too little too late and nobody wants like at this point, if you're inside Crown Spire, you don't have to deal with the apocalypse, but, like, outside of it is, like, a wasteland of, like, creatures that roam the lands looking to, like, eat people, and, like, no one wants to deal with that. So, chances are probably not here, but, like I said, um, I left it fairly open-ended so that, like, maybe there's a city out there that has survived and they treated the situation very differently. Okay. So, so there's, there's, that was actually going to be my next question. Sure. Um, like, is there, is there, um, rumors or is there evidence that there are people outside of crown spire? Is this something that, uh, act, uh, Octavian has tried to squash or, or keep quiet. 
um is is there like rumors are we are we are we, are we ha- having an attack on titan type deal where you know oh let's go outside the walls and they're like there's nothing outside the walls don't even think about it yeah kind of you know i like to think that in in a zombie apocalypse scenario octavian would treat it much like attack on titan where you know like yeah you can go outside the walls but it's death and destruction out there you'll you'll die going out there so there's no point in like straying too far you know like maybe it's just like making sure that the wall is okay or you know moving some of these you know zombies if you will to another place or dispatching some of them from a safe distance etc etc but yeah they they would definitely I think Octavian probably would rather everybody be secluded and safe than potentially finding, you know, a band of raiders who who show up and start trying to break into their town and cause mm. chaos and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So is uh is is military service like a mandatory thing for being a citizen of Crown Spire? I have to imagine, I think the way I set this up is, um, you're, you're probably like, it's probably like you have mandatory, uh, guard duty for such, such and such period of time. Mm -hmm, And then mm -hmm. once you hit a certain age, you can like decide to do something else if you want or stay there and get paid to, you know, keep, keep guard and like keep, keep a, a watchful eye. But like, you know, th- basically everyone had to rebuild themselves. So, like, I'm sh- there's probably not like a quote unquote economy or anything sure. like that. So, like, you're probably better off being in the military, where like the 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 roy- you know, the crown spire, like Grand Lord Octavian can take care of you, kind of a thing. Yeah, uh, for sure. Um. And hey, are there is there any resistance to Octavian? Um like or or for the most part do people seem to be pretty okay? Like, you know, maybe maybe he doesn't necessarily have people singing his praises every step of the way, but uh is the general consensus like, well, he kept us safe in a really difficult time. He had to make some some call some hard calls, some tough decisions. Uh, and, um, you know, maybe not the most popular of dudes, but, uh, like, is there an active resistance cell somewhere in the city? You know, that's a good question. I think for, if I were to make this into a campaign, there is definitely some kind of underground resistance. Maybe it's the Druids. Maybe it's, uh, maybe it's, uh, you know, I'd like to think because Grand Lord Octavian used wizards and clerics that like there's probably like anti wizard cults or like a, an organization down there that's like, yo, these these are the guys that fucked us over. We should kick them out before they cause, you know, uh, outbreak to or whatever. Sure. Um yeah, there would definitely be like several different factions that have their own agendas. Um Oh yeah, for sure. Um I don't I mean, I think in the grand scheme of things, I think those who are in good standing with him are probably those who are like, "Oh, I lived in the upper district" or "Oh, I was one of the people who helped" save this city and stuff like that so like i'm sure there is a, hmm. a a large group of people who are dedicated to his like you know the sure. fact that he had to make a really tough call and purge his entire city or you know a, a big section of the city yeah. um yeah, yeah, but, yeah, there's, yeah sure. but like if i wanted to run this i definitely wouldn't be like everyone's just really cool with this guy even though he definitely purged a city yeah, I, I get that. Would that. Just, yeah, that would be like being chill with Arthas after he purged Stratholm. And everyone was just like, yeah, no, that's cool. <laughs> A reference we can all enjoy. Yes, for all of you Warcraft nerds out there, that was for um, you. And then uh, these, these rangers that go outside the city walls, are these like the elite 
rangers or are these like some elite soldiers is this like the cream of the crop the creme de la creme like you know i i'd have to imagine i i don't want to necessarily limit it to the cream of the crop although you're deaf like people who want to go out of the city have to be some kind of crazy especially with what happened in the city so like you know um it's kind of like uh again i i guess when i made this i i guess i kind of sort of did my 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 take on attack on titan without titans Mm -hmm. but yeah like if if there's safety within the city why would you ever want to leave it you know like there has to be this level of like wanderlust that you have or you know reckless disregard for your life that you'd you would need to be so definitely maybe not cream of the crop but you definitely have like a very specific mentality about how you want like how you want to live your life and that's the those are the rangers okay okay uh and then i think uh for my final question yeah. Um, which is ultimately, I feel like always going to end up being the final question on these kinds of episodes is, um, were you to, uh, set a D and D campaign here, uh, what would be your starting point hook and what are some adventures you might send an adventuring party on? Oh man. Um, I would definitely, man, there, there's, there's, there's a lot of good options here. A lot of cool angles you can tackle depending on the type of group. I mean, you could be part of grand lord octavian secret police and you're like sussing out a you know a uh, resistance group that wants to like secretly murder somebody or bring back the plague um i or you could you could be one of the branches of the military like you know do you want to be one of the rangers who leaves a city and really get like that you know you're exploring a really desolate land filled with creatures that would kill you as soon as they saw you um i think some some hooks would definitely be that like there's turmoil in the city like right now people are starting to get antsy that there are more and more people getting burned at the pyre than like you'd think at this point that people would just like not be cool with this plague yet this grand lord octavian guy is continuing to like look for people and like he's he's getting like you know maybe he's getting a little too paranoid and so there's a lot of tension in the city so i think some hooks there would be like yo uh there was a riot in in one of the marketplaces like you need to go check that out or um those kinds of things and what was the other part of the question again um i mean just kind of like what do you what would you see some like adventures being in this city oh yeah like i would there would definitely be like infiltration or like mysteries where like you have to figure out like oh yeah there was a murder at this place like who was involved and like you know going around and asking people questions to like figure out who might be a part of this like resistance or uh, cult or whatever you want to call it and and or like you know just general like keeping the peace like oh you're you are a squad of officers who who goes to the square and then like some person just starts shooting fireballs from their hands and starts going nuts and you got to like protect the people like there's there's tons of things you can do in a big city Mm -hmm. um both good or bad or like whatever side of the law you want to be on um i could imagine you do a whole thing where like maybe you're part of like local bandits who are just trying to make make do like maybe lord octavian's kind of an asshole and doesn't give food to all of the people so like your your job you're like the mod you're the modern day apocalypse robin hood where you have to go and find you know stashes of food so you can give them to the 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 other people in the city and whatnot like there's tons of things you can do in a big city um i don't even know where to start on like i could i could literally continue to talk for like another 10 15 minutes about the various things but like yeah zombie apocalypse 
creates a interesting thing because like there's this big rap uh there's this big tension in the background that like what if the walls aren't gonna cut it like what if the plague comes back right and so you have this kind of small apocalypse surviving town trying to make do in a situation that's not ideal so a lot of those like survivor elements come into play as like hooks and things that can make the townspeople go a little, you know, stir crazy, if you will. Um, so yeah, I would I would start there and then like ramping up to like maybe that maybe uh, Grand Lord Octavian loses it and starts another purge, and you and your adventuring party have to stop him from like going nuclear on the town again. You know, like there's tons of ways to use the idea of an apocalypse and the paranoia and like the survivor elements of that system and bringing it into a tabletop role-playing game like this. So I could, yeah, for for... sure. It's a, it's a neat idea for sure. And, you know, uh, I'm sorry to bring up the, the, the attack on Titan thing, but that was something that just kind of jumped out so clearly and clear in my mind as we were. And you know, it's funny because like in one of the goals, like as I was thinking about this, I was like, all right, I don't want to do traditional undead. And so mm-hmm. I was like, man, you know what? You know what zombies I really liked? The ones in The Last of Us where they're like, sure, where they're yeah. like plant like and they like, you know, there's like fungus growing on them or whatever. And so that's actually where my brain went. And then like seeing how like, you know, because Attack on Titan is kind of like an apocalypse surviving tale. And so you see a lot of that just by being in a fantasy world and like doing stuff like that. So it's interesting how like they how how i was thinking one way but because it's an apocalypse like you can really start to see elements of a lot of different things like i was already seeing 28 weeks later where they kind of do the same Mm -hmm. thing where sure they're they're like oh we're bringing people back to the towns that they once lived in and then like shit goes crazy and you know zombies are back like you know there's the different directions you can go with it and i actually really like that you mentioned that because like i wasn't even thinking in my brain like Oh yeah, Attack on Titan. I was, you know, I was thinking The Last of Us, and it's cool how they kind of co-mingle like that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, anything else before we wrap her up? This was really fun. If you if you guys like, um, if you're looking for like a fun one shotty like apocalypse scenario, feel free to take Crown Spire. Yeah. All right. And hey, Cody, if people liked this episode and they want to learn more, where are some places that they can learn more? They can go to our website at www.fandomroulette.com, where all of our episodes go live as they go to the World Wide Web. And there's a bunch of other information about the other different shows we're doing and a bunch of other stuff. So feel free to check out the website. And hey, if people want to listen to this episode, but they don't necessarily use the same podcasting apps that you do, uh, where are some places that people can find episodes of our show? We are on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, basically anywhere that you can find a podcast. All you got to do is search Fandom Roulette. And hey, if people want to uh, you know, send us a funny meme or check in or see how we're doing or get information about you know, uh, our scheduling and things like that, where are some social medias that they can find us? Well, if you're Twitter savvy, you can find us at fandom R underscore podcast. That is our Twitter handle. But if you're more of a Facebook or Instagram type of person, you can find us by searching fandom roulette. Uh, also, please remember to like, rate, review, and subscribe. Uh, yeah. click, the, click the bell. Um, you know, tell a friend, write a review, give us five stars. Uh, whatever you know that particular app does for its metrics uh any any little bit of positive feedback helps us move up the ranks and gets us into the uh you know the feeds of people who might not necessarily have found us otherwise um get us into those algorithms and we can continue to keep making fun stuff like this for you to uh, listen to and enjoy yeah Um, we know there's lots of media out there you know lots of podcasts and Uh, stuff for you to spend your time on so we want to thank you for spending a little bit of it with us here at fandom roulette yeah thank Um, you yeah and uh signing off for fandom roulette this is joe and i'm cody and as always stay nerdy stay super dirty